So there are different definitions for acids and bases, um, and I will not be testing you on which definition it is, okay? But we need to be able to apply the definitions. So the Arrhenius definition is that an acid produces hydrogen ions in aqueous solution. So something like HCl, we've learned to identify that as an acid because the formula starts with H, and we name it hydrochloric acid. But this is a covalent compound. It doesn't have ions in it. It's two nonmetals. It's a covalent bond between hydrogen and chlorine. But when you put that into water, it ionizes. It forms ions. It forms hydrogen ions and chloride ions, and those ions separate. Because when you put this in water, it forms hydrogen ions, Arrhenius definition says this is an acid. Okay, so anything that you put into water and it forms hydrogen ions is an Arrhenius acid. What is a hydrogen ion? Let's think about a hydrogen atom. How many protons does a hydrogen atom have? One. One. And how many electrons? Yeah. One. So if we have a hydrogen ion with a positive one charge, how many electrons does it have? Zero. All it is, is a proton. It's a bare naked little proton. Does that sound like it would be very happy and stable and good with itself? Yeah. No, not so much. Hydrogen ions are highly reactive. You don't find hydrogen ions by themselves. In aqueous solution, which is where we encounter them or see them formed most often, this hydrogen ion is going to bond to a water molecule. This guy doesn't have a duet of electrons. He has no electrons. Here's a water molecule with two lone pairs of electrons. And this hydrogen ion comes over here, hey, would you share that pair of electrons with me? And the water molecule says, sure, I can do that. And so this hydrogen ion bonds to a water molecule. So this has the formula H3O+, plus, and it has the name hydronium ion. I think of this as a hydrogen ion being a baby, right? Little baby. You know, you go walking around Fresno, do you see little babies out on the sidewalk by themselves? No. no. You see them with adults, right? Being held or, or pushed in a stroller or something. So this is the baby, and here is the parent, and the baby is being held by the parent. It's riding piggyback, maybe. So the water molecule is carrying this hydrogen ion around. It can put it down or pass it off to someone else, and we'll see how that happens. But you're not going to see hydrogen ions by themselves in water molecules because they're going to attach themselves to a water. Um, we often use the terms hydrogen ion aqueous and H3O plus aqueous interchangeably. What we mean by both of them is this hydronium ion, because there really are no hydrogen ions that are free in the water. They're all being held by water molecules. But when we write our chemical equations with H3O plus, having that extra water molecule in there makes a lot of the equations more complicated. And so it's simpler to just talk about the hydrogen ion. But we understand that if we say, well, you know, baby, baby Andrew went to Disneyland, he didn't go by himself, did he? He went with somebody. And so when we talk about hydrogen ions in solution, we understand that they are being held by a water molecule. Okay, so we use those interchangeably. Um, when we write the formula for an acid, we, we generally write the ionizable hydrogen first. So an acid ionizes and releases hydrogen ions when it's put into water. So some acids only have one hydrogen ion that can ionize. Some have more, two or even three. The ionizable hydrogen is written first. So formic acid is written HCHO2. Instead of combining these two hydrogens, we write one of them first because this is the ionizable hydrogen. If we look at the structural formula, it's this hydrogen that's bonded to the oxygen that will come off as a hydrogen ion. This hydrogen over here won't do that. It will always stay bonded to this carbon. 
There are situations where this might be written differently as CH2O2, but in this class, we're going to write any acid with the hydrogens first, the ionizable hydrogens. So this is where you can get into a little trouble, like Googling something, right? Because there may be other compounds with the same molecular formula. The Arrhenius definition of a base is something that produces hydroxide ions in aqueous solution. So sodium hydroxide is an Arrhenius base. This is an ionic compound. It's soluble. We put it into water. It separates into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. There we have the hydroxide ions. It's a base. There are compounds that have OH in their formula, like methanol. And so you might look at that and think, oh, that's a base. There's the OH group. But methanol is a molecular compound. It does not ionize in water. So how do you tell the difference? Well, the bases that have hydroxide in them are all ionic compounds. So they're going to have a metal and a hydroxide ion. If it doesn't have a metal, like this CH3OH, it's not a base. Well, if we have a, a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion, those can combine with each other and form a water molecule. So this is neutralization. The hydrogen ion from the acid and the hydroxide ion from the base, put those two together and we get water. Um, the Arrhenius definition doesn't explain all bases. There are some things like NH3 um, that act as bases, but they don't have hydroxide ions in them. And so the Arrhenius definition is a bit incomplete. It also doesn't work um, in non-aqueous solvents. So if you're using um, acetonitrile or some other organic solvent, um, the Arrhenius definition doesn't work because the Arrhenius definition says when you put it in water, it does this. Well, if you put it in something else, what happens? So there's another definition, the Bronsted-Lowry definition. And both of these are named after scientists. Um, in the Bronsted-Lowry definition, an acid is a proton donor, and a base is a proton acceptor. So this definition works in a larger context. It'll work in non-aqueous um, solutions and for things that don't have hydroxide in them. It's focusing on the transfer of hydrogen ions. Remember, we talked about what is a hydrogen ion. A hydrogen ion is a proton. So when we talk about a proton donor, we could think of it as hydrogen ion donor. It's going to give a hydrogen ion to something else. A base is a hydrogen ion acceptor. So let's look at hydrochloric acid in terms of the Bronsted-Lowry definition. When you put hydrochloric acid into water, it donates a hydrogen ion to the water molecule. It makes a hydrogen ion, and the hydrogen ion goes and attaches itself to the water molecule. So this forms hydronium ion and chloride ion. So this is the acid, and here water is acting as a base, because a base is a proton acceptor. So I think of bases as being like babysitters. The acid is the parent, and it's going to pass off its proton, this hydrogen ion, to the babysitter. The babysitter is going to hold it for a while. And so we've got this hydrogen ion, this kid is being passed back and forth, back and forth. So the water, the water can act as a base, yeah. Ammonia, NH3, is a base, but it doesn't work very well with the Arrhenius definition because it doesn't, it doesn't have hydroxide ions in it. So you look at that and you're like, how the heck is that going to make hydroxide ions? Well, when you put ammonia in water, water acts as an acid and donates a hydrogen ion to the ammonia, creating ammonium ion. So we have a hydrogen ion, one of these hydrogens, without any electrons, being transferred to the ammonia. So the ammonia is acting as the base, the babysitter. It's like, oh, yeah, I'll take the, I'll take the proton for you. 
And what we've got at the end of this reaction is we've got an ammonium ion and a hydroxide ion. So now water is acting as the acid. It's donating a proton to the ammonia. The base is the proton acceptor. The babysitter takes the kid. Yep, I'll hold them for you. Go ride, go, go ride the Matterhorn. I'll stand here and hold the baby. Um, acids and bases are always going to occur together. They're going to function together. Just like oxidation and reduction went hand in hand. You, you can't have one without the other. So here, in order for this to act as an acid, there has to be a base. If this is going to donate its proton, it has to donate it to something. You can't leave the protons on the sidewalk while you go ride the rides at Disneyland. You can't leave the baby there. You have to hand him off to somebody, right? So the base is the acceptor, the proton acceptor. Here, ammonia was the base, and water is the acid. Water is saying, well, here, you take my kid. And ammonia says, okay, I'll do that. It goes back and forth. So we see that water is acting as a base and as an acid. How can you tell this? Well, it, you can tell the difference by what it's interacting with. So we look at, it started out as H2O, and then we look at, well, what form does it have as the product? Mm -hmm. So here it has lost a hydrogen ion to be OH minus. Mm -hmm. So it acted as an acid. It donated its proton. Is, um, is, uh, why is it only one that? No, there are other substances that can act as an acid and base. Will we, like, deal with those substances? Um, I can't remember if we deal with those or not. I think they show up, but they're not really a big deal. And so here we see water acting as a base. It's holding the hydrogen ion. So it's like, you know, who's holding the baby? Well, she, the, the water took the baby, so the water acted as the base. So we have a, a word for um, substances like that, amphoteric, which is, you know, got the same prefix as amphibian. Right? An amphibian lives on the water and in the land. In the land and on the water? No. In the water and on the land. Get that straight. So an amphoteric substance can act as an acid or a base. It can accept a proton, but it can also donate a proton. Some substances are amphoteric, most are not. Like if you look at chloride ion, could that donate a hydrogen ion to anything? No, it doesn't have a hydrogen to donate, so it can't do that. It can't act as an acid. So if we take the reaction that we were looking at, this one right here, notice that this has a, um, two arrows, one pointing in each direction, whereas this one is only pointing to the right. If we take this reaction and we just reverse it, we write it backwards, we get this reaction. Now, ammonia and water on the product side, ammonium and hydroxide ions on the reactant side. If we look at ammonium ion and hydroxide ion reacting with each other, ammonium can donate a proton to hydroxide. Basically, it's taking the, it's just handing it back, right? And so then we get ammonia and water back. Here, hydroxide is the base, and ammonium is the acid. So if you run this reaction um, from ammonia to ammonium, ammonia acts as the base. It will accept a proton. Ammonium can act as an acid and donate a proton. So these are a pair. They're called a, a conjugate acid-base pair. They're two substances that are related by the transfer of a proton. This one has an extra proton compared to that one. It has one more hydrogen, and the charge is one higher. Yes? Must they always be written in a reaction to be considered conjugates? Or can you no, you can just look at two substances, you know, two formulas, and say that's a conjugate acid-base pair. And, and the way you identify that is you look at the formulas. They have to differ by one hydrogen. 
So this is H3 and that's H4. And the one with more hydrogens, the charge needs to be one more positive than the other. So a conjugate acid-base pair, any two substances related to each other by the transfer of a proton. So let's just do a couple of examples for... Um, well, how about HBr? What would you get if HBr donated a proton? You get Br minus, right? So this can donate a proton. This is an acid. This could accept the proton. It's the base. You can, you can look at the chemical equation. You can do HBr plus H2O. So um, the water is going to act as the base. It's going to accept the proton. So this is the acid, and this is the base. This is the donor, and this is the babysitter, the base. Base and babysitter, and blue. I'll start with B. So the acid becomes a base. So this is a con the conjugate base. That's a J. And the base becomes an acid. That's the conjugate acid. Did you have to do that? Could you have said HBr plus OH? You could do. You could do that, yeah. Could have said any substances. So did you pick water? I just picked water because we're, we're thinking about putting stuff in water. Is H3O a liquid or H2? Well, H3O plus is an ion. And so you can't have pure H3O+. Plus. It's aqueous, yeah. It's only found in water. So in any acid-base reaction, there's an acid and a base, and then in the products, there's a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. And so the partners, or the pairs, H2O and H3O plus are an acid-base pair. H2O and H3O plus. And HBr and Br minus are an acid-base pair. Because their formulas are different by one hydrogen and one charge. So the base accepts a proton, becoming a conjugate acid. So here we have the base. It's going to accept a proton from the acid water, and it will become a conjugate acid. Because this now could donate its proton to something else. So it becomes an acid. If you don't have a baby, you can't pass the baby off to someone, right? If you don't have a hydrogen ion, you can't act as an acid. But if you have a hydrogen ion, you can act as an acid. You can donate it to someone else. The acid here, water, accepts that hydrogen. I'm sorry, yeah. No, the acid donates the hydrogen ion and becomes a conjugate base. So the difference here is we're adding a hydrogen ion to the ammonia. We're removing a hydrogen ion from the acid, the water. How did you not, why didn't you take the H from the ammonia? Oh, so that's the base. Yeah. Yeah, this is the base, and so it's going to accept the hydrogen ion. Yes? Do you know ammonia is a base because the H is not written first, so it can't be donated? Right. Okay. We know that this isn't an acid because if it was an acid, it would be H and H2. And then you'd say, oh, well, there, that's an acid that could donate its proton, but it's not written first. So it can only act as an acid if it's got a hydrogen first. What if it was written um, H and H2 plus H2O? When, when, how would we decide then that they're both acids? Well, see, water can go either way. So just automatically switch that to... Yeah, so water is just going to accommodate whatever 
the others doing. And then the N H two would give their hydrogen. Yeah. And what makes us <laughs> a little tricky is that we're we're just like skimming the surface of this topic, and so there's like these there's so much more stuff underneath. And so I'm trying not to get into trouble answering your questions. I don't want to lie to you more than I have to. So this is a sort of a problem that we should be able to do. In each reaction, identify the Bronsted-Lowry acid, the Bronsted-Lowry base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. So don't get hung up on the term Bronsted-Lowry. It's in there. Just ignore it. Identify the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. So the conjugates are always going to be the product side. The acid and the base are in the reactants, and they become the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. So when we look at these two, well, this doesn't look like an acid because it doesn't start with H. But how else could we figure out what's going on here? If we look at the other side, look what happened. Did this compound accept a proton or donate one? It accepted it. So this is the base because it's acting like a babysitter and it's accepting the proton. And we can look at what happened to the water. H2O became OH minus. Did it accept a proton or donate? It donated. So this is the base. That's the acid. Over here, we also have an acid and a base, but we're going to call them the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. So here, water was the acid. What water turned into is going to be the conjugate base. So this is the conjugate base. This is the base. It turned into this. It accepted the hydrogen ion. This becomes the conjugate acid. This could act as an acid now. I know it's not written with the hydrogen first. Sorry about that. This could act as an acid. It's got this positive charge because it's carrying an extra hydrogen ion. Let's look at B. HNO3 and H2O react to form NO3- and H3O+. Which one is the acid? HNO3. The HNO3. As we see, HNO3 becomes NO3-, and it does that by donating a hydrogen ion. So the acid becomes the conjugate base. This one's the acid, this one has to be the base. And we see that the water accepted the proton. So this is the base, and it becomes the conjugate acid. Any questions?